Hey allihop, this is Maria Obring, and I'm excited to be part of Humans of Telecom. Hey everyone, a very warm welcome to Humans of Telecom, the Unplugged podcast. This is your host Anurag Agarwal, Chief Growth Officer at Globe Teleservices. As most of you know by now, this podcast takes you behind the scenes of the fast-paced world of telecom and showcases the human side of some of the most well-known individuals within the space. It has hosted guests from all walks of life and from all parts of the world, be that Asia, Africa, Americas, and even Europe. And talking about geography, our guest today comes from the Nordics region, a part of Europe which I've always found very unique and exotic. Whether it's the legendary land of Santa Claus or the mesmerizing Northern Lights, this region has it all. And our guest today has devoted her life to the telecom space while operating from this amazing part of the world. She has worked in some of the most well-known telecom brands worldwide and is now leading from the front in a very popular carrier group. So let's learn today more about Maria Obrink, Head of Sales at Telenor Links. Maria, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of this journey. We'd love to hear more about you, which part of the world do you belong to and from where are you joining this podcast today? Hi, Anurag. Thank you for having me and thank you for the very nice introduction. I'm calling in today from Stockholm in the capital of Sweden, um, which is quite far up in the world, actually. Um, used to be uh, from Gothenburg originally, which is on the west coast of Sweden, but moved to Stockholm and I haven't regretted it a single day. Wonderful. And how is life in Sweden? You know, I mean... You're very right. It's it's quite far up there and not everybody has the opportunity. I mean, thankfully, I did get one opportunity to visit Stockholm and I fell in love with the place. I remember visiting the older part of Stockholm called Gamlastan and I loved the vibe of that place. So how is it like uh, growing up in Sweden? Well, it's in the summertime, it's very bright, but you all have heard about the winter times when it's very, very dark. You kind of have to, um, in the summer, we're all outside to capture all the energy we can in order to survive the winters. So being able to travel in the world uh, gives you the, uh, the possibility of getting above the clouds and see the sun every now and then, which is so necessary. Wonderful. And uh, coming on onto our industry, telecom. So how did you end up in the telecom space? We'd love to hear about your journey and did you wind up into telecoms by chance or was it choice? So let's hear your story. Uh, that was just by chance. Uh, that was a lucky, um, lucky path of my life, I would say. It was actually back already in 99, Christmas in 99. I went back to my parents um, and I was so sad and just crying because I was working with selling the yellow pages. For the elder ones in this business, you all know the yellow pages. And it was such a hard work because you were talking to people that really didn't want to talk, talk to you. that didn't want to spend as much money as we wanted them to pay. And I was complaining. And then came a neighbor to visit. And he started talking about how he had started uh, joining this telecoms business from another angle and wanted, asked me if I wanted to join. And... I jumped on, said, of course I will. Uh, I had no idea what I was going to do. But that was actually him introducing IDT to me. So that's how I ended up in the telecoms business. And I haven't regretted it one single day. But I had absolutely no idea what I was getting, getting myself into. And I, <laughs> I remember um, all the abbreviations trying to understand what the business was all about which was not easy, to say the least. Wonderful. And uh, after IDT, I think you have still been moving around and today you're in Telenor. So what's kept you to Sweden? Like you've always been based in Sweden, I can see. So what's made you remain in Sweden and not, you know, explore other parts of Europe or other parts of the world? Well, usually that has been one of the uh, prerequisite that they've been looking for someone who's located locally in Sweden, uh, looking after for IDT was for all of the Nordics. When I joined Deutsche Telekom or T-Systems, it was to look after Sweden in particular. So that has been 
one of the the things of having someone local in the region, you always want to be as close as possible to to your customers. So for reaching the rest of the world, well, I have a team scattered out in the world um, so that they're close to where they live. Absolutely. I can totally get that. And uh, within this uh, illustrious career of yours, whether it starts with the yellow pages, by the way, I know about the yellow pages as well. I remember (laughs) back in my childhood days, you know, having those big directories of yellow pages with all the classifieds and all the contacts. So (laughs) I remember that era as well. So uh, between your time at, say, the Yellow Pages and IDT and Deutsche Telekom and now Telenor and where have you, uh, if there is one memorable or impactful moment which you'd really like to talk about, what would that be? Well, it was actually after IDT, I moved to Carry One. That was a wholesale operator. And they went bankrupt in 2002, just before a few other companies followed. Um, And I was out of the business. And that was so painful. Um, I was sad, uh, but still had life went on. So I started with Shergard renting out storage to people. And it was dead boring. So to the point that I actually uh, quit my job without having anything new. But one hour later, believe me or not, <laughs> my old boss from Carry One called me up and said, I've just joined T-Systems, which is then Deutsche Telekom. And they have decided to buy the Nordic ring from Carry One, the legacy. Uh, do you want to come back? So that was such a happy day for me to come back to the business, to meet all the nice people again. And I haven't regretted it one single day. Um, and then I actually have a second memory, which is in, in 2004 when I joined Telenor. And the first two weeks, we had celebrations for people that had been with that company for 30, 40, 50 odd years. And I was like, what sect am I getting myself into? Because up until then, I'd spent maximum two years in each company. And believe it or not, now I've been here for 19 years in October. So I'm part of the sect because it's such a great family and it filled with so many opportunities that I don't want to leave. Wonderful. So I guess you were destined to remain in the carrier world. And that's why, (laughs) you know, the timely merger happened and you were able to get back into carrier one. Amazing. All right. And then moving on now, shifting gears from the telecom side to the human side. So Mm -hmm. Maria, from whatever I've interacted with you, I know that you're a very family oriented person. I think, you know, that uh, quality is something which is very visible generally in the Nordics as well. You know, you see the community as, as as being very tightly knitted amongst each other. So if I ask you that, uh, tell us a bit more about that side of Maria. What can you talk to us about? Well, I had some uh, big happenings back in 2010, <clears throat> where especially my mom caught a massive stroke. Uh, that was out of the blue, of course, as always, but that was uh, really... Uh, a change of life because you always hear about how you should approach people, how you should talk to people, etc. But I didn't understand the meaning of it. But to say, uh, to take it briefly, my mom's left brain, that was almost completely dead. And within within your left brain, you actually have all the structure, numbers, um, so that you can control everything that is happening more or less. And the right-hand side of the brain is more the fluffy parts, the the loving side, the caring side that thinks about the your body language, for instance. So my mom didn't didn't understand the words anymore, really, but she understood the uh, the tone of voice and the body language. So, for instance, I could come up to her and and I tried this <laughs> a few times just to see if it was true. But I actually told her, "Oh, mommy, I hate you." And she looked at me and smiling and thinking, I said, I love you. Because she just looked at my face and heard my tone. But I could also look at her and say, mom, I love you. But in that negative tone. But she would think I would say, I hate you. So just having that in mind of how I approached her. If I had the wrong energy, I had to actually stop outside the house. I couldn't enter because if I came with the wrong attitude to her I could not ruin just 
that day, but an entire week for her. I just sucked all of the energy out of her. So being much more careful about my attitude and the tone of voice got me learned, taught me so much about how people are functioning in general. And then on top of that, uh, my daughter at the time was three years old. But when she turned seven, uh, so in 2014, she got her first diagnosis, which was ADHD. And then we piled it up with dyslexia and with uh, language disorder. So she don't understand the language properly all the time. And then on top of that, in 2020, she got an intellectual dysfunction uh, disorder, which is, which means that she has a maximum I- IQ of 70. So when I'm talking to her, I have to think about how I say things and I have to pivot on everything that I'm saying. I can give you an example. For instance, she was doing mathematics um, when she was seven and I was saying, holding up one hand saying one plus one, how much is that? And that was clear to her. That was two. Then a week later, we were doing the same thing and I was repeating the one plus one, but this time I held up one finger on each hand. And she looked at it and saying, it's 11. And I looked down at my fingers going, yeah, it's two fingers, but on one hand each. So that made me thinking of how she wired. How can I get through to her? What uh, words can I use, etc. And she's also reacting super hard uh, on my tone of voice. So back to what I learned from my mom, I always have to maintain a calm attitude towards her despite her doing wrong so i'm one of those curling mothers that you see out there uh when i'm out and out and about amongst people because if she misbehaves i cannot react with an angry tone i just make things worse always have to keep my calm and trust me (laughs) that's not easy but i've been able to then take this what i've learned from my mom and my daughter to bring it on to uh, what I do in work, how I approach everyone at work and outside of work. And I've become much more relaxed despite having a high pace all the time and being much more understanding of the people around me that depending on where they come from, how they've understood my message, I don't get angry when they don't understand the first time. I pivot on my message and try to to change the wordings so until I see that the person in front of me have actually understood the message. I'm amazed with the brain that we've all got uh, and how different it works uh, amongst everyone. It's fascinating. Gosh, Maria, I mean, uh, I really don't know what to say. It's it's quite amazing how you manage through these hardships. And, you know, the thought that comes to my mind is that they say that Often people don't remember what you say to them, no. but they remember how you made them feel. Exactly. And what you mentioned about uh, the way you have to interact with your mother and more than the what, it is the how, which is yeah. making so much uh, of an impact uh, on her. And similarly, even for your daughter, you know, I mean, the way you have to handle these situations. You're so right that we as humans have a habit at times of being impulsive or reactive to the situation at hand. You know, they say that the ability to stay calm is also a superpower of sorts. And I think uh, given life's adversities and life's challenges, I think that's taught you really well to maintain that calm demeanor. And I think while we've never met, but, uh, you know, I've seen your pictures and, you know, I've interacted with you. And I think this entire personality of yours, which you have shaped over the years, it just comes out so naturally in your aura. So I, I mean, seriously, hats off to you for living through all this and winning in life with so many things happening around you. Thank you so much. I actually see it as a huge gift because it has also forced me to be in the present. I used to always live in the future, but then I didn't appreciate what I had. Now I appreciate much more what I have and don't have to. Of course, I'm making up my dreams as everyone else, but I'm also trying to be realistic about them on what's achievable or not. And it's um, it's fantastic. 
Very true. And I think that makes sense as they say that living in the future brings you anxiety. Living in the past brings regret. Uh, the best place to live in is the present. And I think yes. it's, it's good that, you know, you're getting to have that mindset. Yes. All right. And uh, moving on, uh, let's hear a bit more about the person Maria now. So, Maria, I mean, so many people in the industry know you and uh, you've been around for two decades now or over two decades. Uh, if there is something shocking or unknown about Maria that you can share with our listeners today, what would that be? Well, most, I'm kind of an open book. So most people know that I'm I'm skiing and doing crazy stuff every now and then. But one thing <laughs> that is probably comes as a bit of a shock is I am super afraid of ferry wheels. I don't want to go into one. I start crying. So, for instance, Capacity Europe, don't even ask me to join you on the London Eye. It's not happening. <laughs> it's terrifying. Interesting. But uh, I'm guessing you're okay with roller coaster rides, or is that yeah. also something? No, okay. roller coaster rides are okay, but not the Ferris wheel. That's uh, that's scary shit. <laughs> okay, that's very ironic because, you know, uh, I think if you would have said scared of heights, I could have understood or scared of amusement rides. But if yep. somebody is fine with a roller coaster ride, I'm quite surprised that, uh, you know, a London Eye would actually make you thinking twice. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, since that's not something that you're fond of doing, if we ask you something that you are fond of doing, so what is it that you like to do to recharge yourself or what are your passions? What is something you can talk to us about? Well, some of the things I'm doing on a daily basis, more or less, is uh, running and going to the gym, doing functional training and etc. And I love go skiing, being a Nordic person as I am, uh, downhill especially. Uh, and I love traveling. And traveling with my daughter, we have done so many uh, excursions together and, you know, getting to see everything from her point of view, not just from my point of view, fantastic. And then family and friends. They're very, very dear to me. I spend as much time as I can with them. Wonderful. And I have seen your passion for fitness also. So yes, I can totally vouch <laughs> for that. <laughs> yes. All right. And on that note, we move to our next section where we play two games with our guests. So then the first one, I'm going to put up five words to you. And for each mm -hmm. of those words, I'd like to know the first thought that comes to your mind. And uh, please be spontaneous, be human, be natural. So <laughs> would love to know what you think about those five words and what's the first thought that comes to your mind. Yes. All right. So the first one is telecom. Communication. Being able to reach everyone. Okay. The second one is motivation. Oh, um, happy. Just looking at things from the, uh, the positive side. Yeah, that's a positive spin. The third is something you've spoken about, but putting it up again, family. Love. It's um, close to my heart. I can see that. The fourth one is career. Career. Um, meeting with people and learning. Learning, I would say, is the word. All right. And the final one, where we are today, podcast. Also learning. I'm listening a lot to podcasts and learning so much about people from your own mm -hmm. uh, humans of telecom, for instance. It's an extremely fun to listen to everyone you have interviewed, um, as well as listening to um, other stories from, from life and people, so educating Wonderful. And I totally agree that, you know, it is a very educative experience. And I personally follow so many podcasts as well. I'm actually listening to a lot of podcasts when I'm out running because I don't have to think about the pace that I'm running in, but listening and then laughing every now and then or being in awe of things. It's, um, I can truly recommend that for people that haven't tried. Listen to podcasts when running. Relaxing. <laughs> Ditto. And, you know, even when I'm out for my runs or I'd like to call it a jog, to be very honest, I'm not quite in the running mode personally. But when I'm out there and about, you know, mostly when I'm tuned in into podcasts and I find that much more refreshing than even listening to music. You know, somehow I feel that I'm managing to multitask and learn something and give my body its time with nature as well. Fully totally agree with you. 
yeah it's i just think it's totally a good experience to be tuned in into podcast mm. all right and uh, the second game so the guest puts up three statements to me and two of them have to be truths one of them has to be a lie but the expectation is that they are all such fantastically unbelievable statements that it's difficult to make out which one is a truth and which one is a lie so would you have three such statements for us today okay this is tough but let's see first one is in elementary school i was stronger than everyone in arm wrestling second one is i managed to complete the stockholm marathon last year in 4 hours 20 minutes and the third one is twice i've managed to get more money from a, an insurance company than i actually even requested <laughs> for the third one okay before i answer those just to get a clarification are you putting up as a statement that you accidentally got twice or you managed to get twice i managed to get twice oh, so wow I, 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 twice <laughs> i've uh, applied and i managed to get more money than i asked for <laughs> all right you know all three are wonderfully interesting statements i would like to believe all three are truths firstly for the entire career community out here that in case if the third one is also a truth then you should definitely consider maria for your collections team you know there is a strong possibility that your revenues may just double just because <laughs> of one individual <laughs> Okay so let's see so I know that as I mentioned that I know that you are quite athletic I would definitely believe that you would have run the marathon I would like to believe the third one is the truth as well and personally I feel that you would be amazing at arm wrestling but just for the sake of this game I'd like to say that that one is a lie and the second and third one are truths so am I right out here No I did beat all the boys in arm wrestling and the girls for that matter okay. so every every break i had in school they called me out saying sit down i'm going to beat you in arm wrestling and they couldn't so they had to start going to the gym <laughs> okay and i actually uh, managed to get more money from the insurance companies <laughs> but i haven't done the stockholm marathon interesting so you know actually for again for all the career community you have somebody who's good at extracting double the amount of money and can even beat the opposite side at arm wrestling so you know in case if somebody raises a dispute don't worry <laughs> you, you've got your strong person with you to take care <laughs> interesting and uh, how did you manage to go about getting double the recovery is that something which all our listeners would love to know more about well I, honestly i don't know i've i've been super honest One of them was actually when my mother got her massive stroke. I was down in Lebanon when that happened, and I had to take uh, rebook my flight back home. And I called the insurance company afterwards, saying, explaining what I did, and I showed them the ticket. Um, so they had everything at hand, but they transferred more money to me. That's just part of the games. And then, quite similarly, uh, happened again. So I'm. Uh, I don't know why they still want to keep me as a, an insured person but I'm happy I'm not changing companies <laughs> Wonderful and we are not going to ask you to name the company because still there might be individuals out there who can still get the repercussions for that so I think we're going to leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> All right and the last question of the section so are you fond of reading or watching movies and would you have a favorite book or a movie recommendation for us Let's start with the books. I would actually go for an author instead, which is Pascal Engman. He's a crime Swedish crime author, but very very close to reality. Uh, and I know he's also been translated into many languages, so it's uh, possible for people to find him. Um but it's uh, kind of an eye opener about how society actually works when in drug dealing or when in prostitution or when in the incel and different things like that. So very interesting. Uh when it comes to movies, um I would say Disney and you know Pixar etc in general, but I have one um which is The Inside Out it's called. And that is the reason why I'm picking that one is because I'm always I used to talk to my daughter about, you know, the brain, 
you got the angry man or the the happy uh, man in the in the brain always referring to the people in her head and then you watch the inside out i don't know if you've seen it but it is the angry man he's red and then you got the the happy lady who so he's always happy and cheery and blue and then oh green sorry and then you have one that is about emotions and she's blue and she's always a bit sad in a way and that was an epiphany for my daughter she looked at me going mommy it's the people that you've been talking about that lives in my brain so for me that movie is something that is it's useful when you have kids you can talk about those people in your brain that is con- trying to control you and then you can take control interesting i think both are amazing recommendations and i have personally not come across either of them so i think i will check them out thank you so much on that maria and it's good fun as well you will laugh a lot i'm sure i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> All right and with that we come to our final section which is a sign off section so two quick questions here firstly maria i have never interacted with you so this question is for me also yeah. and for the rest of the listener community that if somebody wants to meet you which are some of the conferences which one can find you at or what's the best way to reach out to you well i'm only going to join one conference this autumn as it seems which is capacity europe so i'm definitely attending that one Uh, apart from that i will be traveling uh, straight to a few customers especially in asia telenor has got entities over there but uh, apart from that you can reach me on through linkedin or uh, through email or phone i love talking i'm full of words so please feel free to reach out wonderful and uh, that brings us to our final question our signature question What does being human mean to you? What sort of a human being would you want the world to remember you as? Well, a human is caring and being respectful to to one each other. And I would love to be remembered for being a good listener, here to help and full of compassion. That's what I try to live um uh, live for at least to have as my legacy. amazing and i think you're doing an amazing job at that i can vouch for thank that <laughs> thank you wonderful maria so i think it's been an amazing conversation it was so insightful and so touching to know so many other facets of you beyond the maria of telenor as i already knew you so thank you so much for your time it was an amazing conversation and i do hope at some point we even cross paths so on that note i wish you all the very best Thank you. I hope too to meet you in person and uh thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much Maria. And uh, as always to our wonderful listeners, thanks a lot for tuning into the show. We hope this episode gave you a good glimpse of the human side of Maria Obring. Someone who is destined to remain in the career world. Someone who has devoted her life to the Nordics and also to her family. An athlete and arm wrestler. <laughs> and most of all an amazing mother and daughter that for us is maria obrink so if you enjoyed today's episode do stay tuned in because we shall soon be releasing yet another episode and another compelling story from the telecom space and do follow the podcast on your preferred streaming channel on behalf of humans of telecom this is your host anurag agarwal signing off for now take care